There are a lot of things that can bring on a migraine. Changing weather, fluctuation in hormones, the list goes on. Treating a migraine can be difficult, and so is anticipating one. Nurtec ODT Remedjapan 75 mg orally dissolving tablets can both treat and prevent migraine attacks in adults. If you're prescribed, be sure to ask your doctor if two eight packs per month could be an option for you. Nurtec ODT is approved for the acute treatment of migraine attacks and preventative treatment of episodic migraine in adults. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec ODT. Allergic reactions can occur even days after using and include trouble breathing, rash, and swelling of the face, mouth, tongue, or throat. Most common side effects were nausea and indigestion stomach pain. For full prescribing information, call 1 833 NERTEC or visit NERTEC.com. Talk to your doctor or HCP about NERTEC ODT. Hello. From Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about women of science fiction. These women inspire us to imagine impossible worlds, alien creatures, and fantastical inventions, revealing our deepest fears and hopes for the future. In the short story, Sultana's Dream, an impossible, fantastic world awaits. Beautiful flowers and lush greenery line every street. Scientists harness the sun to power technology. People get around in flying cars, and women control it all. This is Ladyland, free from sin and harm. Virtue herself reigns here. At the turn of the 20th century, the idea of educating Indian women and allowing them the freedom to become leaders in science and government was utopian. Today, we're talking about the woman from Bengal who dedicated her life to bringing that dream world closer to reality. Please welcome Begum Rakaya. Rakaya Sakawat Hussein was born to a Muslim family around 1880 in Rangpur. Rangpur is in modern-day Bangladesh, but back then the land was still part of India. Rakaya's father was a traditional man. The women in his family were not allowed to receive a formal education. They also had to follow perda, a practice that dictates women stay secluded in different parts of the home called zananas, or wear veils to cover themselves. But Rakaya was smart, and she wanted to bend those strict rules. Her older brother, Ibrahim, would stay up late with Rakaya and their sister, Kari Munissa, giving them a patchwork informal education. Rakaya would often study all night, only pausing for the morning prayer. Ibrahim also encouraged their father to marry Rakaya off to a more liberal and westernized man, though he was more than twice her age. Rakaya's husband supported her education, though, helping improve her English and providing her with countless books. He also encouraged Rakaya to write. Rakaya was most interested in advocating for Indian women's rights in her stories, especially their right to an equal education. She began her career submitting stories to literary magazines. In 1905, Rakaya published her most popular work, Sultana's Dream, in the Indian Ladies magazine. It follows an Indian woman who drifts off in an armchair and enters a surreal dream of a place called Ladyland. It's a beautiful, peaceful, and efficient society run completely by women. They've figured out how to harness the clouds to irrigate crops and can control when it rains. They use high-tech machines to work the land, leaving everyone with more leisure time. And in a gender reversal, men are the ones kept secluded and hidden at home. When the protagonist asks how women were allowed to take control of the country, given that men are physically bigger and stronger, her Ladyland guide explains, quote, A lion is stronger than a man, but it does not enable him to dominate the human race. Sultana's Dream was a groundbreaking feminist utopia story when it was published. It was a vision of the future that Rakaya wanted to make a reality. She said, quote, We constitute one half of the society, and if we are left behind, how can the society progress? Rakaya published other fiction and nonfiction stories promoting women's rights, including attacking some of the more extreme practices of Perda. She also published several novels, and her activism extended beyond the page. When her husband died, he left Rakaya a large sum of money. She used it to open the first school for Muslim girls in her region in 1909. Rakaya would go door to door, trying to persuade families to allow their daughters to learn. She also launched an educational program for poor women in Kolkata, teaching them to read and write. In 1916, Rakaya founded the Muslim Women's Society in Bengal to advocate for women's legal and political rights. The organization helped pay for women to attend school, 
provided shelter for orphans, and offered financial and legal services to widows. About 10 years later, she spoke at the Bengal Women's Education Conference. The conference was one of the earliest attempts in the country's history to organize women around educational rights. Rakaya passed away on December 9, 1932. She was 52 years old. After her death, she became known as Begum Rukhaya, Begum meaning a Muslim woman of high rank. On the anniversary of her death, she's still celebrated as part of Rukhaya Day every year in Bangladesh. And the Bangladeshi government created an award in her honor, given to women who follow in Rukhaya's footsteps by promoting women's rights. All month, we're talking about women of science fiction. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. As always, we'll be taking a break for the weekend. Talk to you on Monday.